welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing our dye Peppermint Stripes Backdrop. So let's go ahead and check it out. This dye creates a peppermint stripe backdrop that is five and a half by four and a quarter and it can be used both portrait and landscape. I love that this dye has the peppermint stripe detail but these stripes are really great in other ways too and we're gonna be showing you a lot of those in this video. So here you can see what it looks like when you lay the peppermint stripes onto a backdrop. You can see that color through it and it creates this really cool striped pattern. And so here we just did it in some craft and white so you can see some neutral colors but now we're gonna show you it in red and white. So we're gonna take a backdrop that we've cut out of white cardstock and layer it on top of some chili pepper cardstock. This is going to give you that peppermint look in a really easy way by just layering the white one over some red cardstock. And here is an example of what it's going to look like and how it's used in a card. So here you can see how cute that is as a background for this adorable card. Now another way to use this die is using it in an inlaid die cut technique. And to do that we're going to die cut it out of red cardstock and out of white cardstock. And there we have a standard size card base and we're going to pop out all of those little white extra stripe pieces. And then we're going to layer that whole frame right onto our card base. Then we're going to be taking those interior pieces out of the red one that we cut and we're going to be dropping those into those little kind of almost like wells or holes that the stripe die has created. And this is going to create kind of like this flat look versus the layered look we did earlier. And it's just a different way to do it. I also find these very fun to create. I feel like filling in the little puzzle pieces, it's like very relaxing for me. So I really like doing these and it's just a different look. And so you can see how cool this is. And of course you could pop any color of cardstock into these stripes, even pattern paper. Now I wanted you to see what this looked like as a finished card. So we're adding a stitch rectangle frame and then a giant holiday message greeting right on top. And how beautiful is that? I love that it works in both portrait and landscape. Now we're going to start creating a card with this stripe backdrop, but first we're going to create our little critter. And this is our Cheery Deer die, and this is one of our paper piecing style dies. And there's two ways to do these. You can cut them out of different colors of cardstock and color in your critter that way, or you can cut it out of white cardstock and color them in with markers. And that's what I'm going to be doing here today. And you can see that I've taken all the pieces and I've added them to a full stick post-it note just to keep everything together and make it easier for me to color them all in. And so we're just going to be adding some color just like this. And today we are recreating a card by Grace. So thank you so much for this gorgeous card, Grace. It really is just stunning. So now we have to start working on the outline of our deer. So we're gonna be taking the solid die, so that's the one that's just the base image, and we're gonna be die cutting that out of some cardstock that we've added some double-sided adhesive to. So we have these awesome double-sided adhesive sheets, and so what I did was peel off one of the paper layers and I attached it to that white cardstock. Now we're gonna run it through the die cut machine and we've effectively created a sticker. So you can peel up that liner paper there and now the entirety of that deer shape has that sticky adhesive on it and I love these adhesive sheets so much. And here you can see we've die cut another deer and in this case we're just going to use that white frame. So this white frame is going to attach onto that adhesive and that's going to create our little puzzle that we have to fill the pieces in that we colored earlier. Now when you cut the frame out of black cardstock, you don't need to worry about this part, but when you color it out of white cardstock, you're gonna to wanna to color in this little deer's nose. So I'm just coloring in his nose and his smile with a brown marker. So there you can see I'm just filling those in. And then now I can drop my pieces in. And once again, if you die cut it out of black cardstock, that effectively colors the nose in for you. So now we're gonna go ahead and drop in all of these little pieces. And how fun is this? I love seeing it come to life. And by adding all the pieces to that full stick posted it just kind of keeps everything organized which is really nice as you start to add these guys to the deer. Now at this moment is when I realized that this little deer's nose was a little too light so I added a darker marker to the nose and the smile and then I can drop in the rest of his face and now all of those little body pieces. Now you're going to notice that I'm not going to work on the outer legs and you'll see why in just a little bit. It was a really cool thing that Grace did but now we've added in his little hooves and we need to do the eyes so I'm just coloring them in with um, a really dark brown marker and that way I can just drop those in and you can see this cute little deer oh my gosh once you add the eyes it's just so fun and so adorable 
Next, we're gonna add a little detail. So I'm gonna take a dark brown marker, the same one we use for the nose and the mouth and the eyes, and I'm just gonna add a couple little dots at the top of his head, and then some white gel pen details around, and that's just gonna make him just look really adorable and make some of the fun little details of this guy stand out. So you can see we're doing dots on the cheeks and the nose, and then around curves that exist, like the ones on his arms and right under one of those antlers. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're actually just going to chop off those side legs. And by doing that, it's going to look more like a deer that's almost like standing up. It's a really cute look, like he's almost standing and holding something or kind of going off of an edge. And you'll see that as we create the card, how adorable that's going to be. The Cheery Deer die comes with a string of lights, which you can use or not. And in this case, we're going to use them. And we're gonna be coloring and filling this in very similarly to the way we did the deer. So right here, I've got my piece just on a full stick poster just to keep everything together. And we're just gonna do some quick shading with three different shades of red markers so that we'll have some nice red Christmas lights. Then we're gonna create our base piece in the same way we did the deer. We're using those double-sided adhesive sheets that's been stuck down to some white cardstock. And then we can peel up that liner paper and now we have a sticker that we can lay our frame piece on. And in this case, we've cut the frame piece from some silver foil cardstock. And doesn't that look incredible? Now we can just pop in those little lights and they're just gonna to stick to the adhesive that's just right there. And it's really easy to do and just really cute and fun just seeing these lights kind of brighten up. Of course, we did all red here, but you could do all different colors or even use foiled cardstock or holographic cardstock, which would look really, really, really pretty too. Next, we're gonna use the Christmas Garland die set. And we went ahead and die cut the greenery out of some cilantro cardstock and all of those bows there out of some chili pepper cardstock. And we're gonna add some detail to this color cardstock. And so this is a nice, fun, and quick way to add detail to your cardstock pieces without having to do any kind of ink blending or anything. So all we're doing here with a marker is, is just creating some little lines along the cardstock. And I'm using two shades of marker, YG63 and then YG61 to kind of blend it out so it's not quite so stark. So we layered the darker green marker and now we're going in with the lighter green marker and you'll see that it just kind of fuzzies out the edges a little bit. It makes it look really, really pretty. So this is a nice way to add some detail to die cuts with just some markers. And the good thing about the lines is they can be messy and scribbly and that's what's gonna make it look even more like greenery. So we're gonna do this to all of the pieces and then we're gonna start working on forming the bow. So the bow has this little kind of tail that sticks out. You add some liquid glue to the back and then you just wrap it around the bow and it makes it look like this cute little three-dimensional bow. So we've got the bow made and now we can add liquid glue to the bow tails there and then layer it on top. And isn't that cute? Oh, I just love those little bows. And then now we're gonna add some detail to the bow as well. So we're gonna take a dark red marker and just add little V shapes right at the end so that it kind of looks like a taut bow, you know? So, and then just right along the little edges of the tails as well. And then we're gonna add some white gel pen lines too so that it coordinates with the white gel pen lines that we added on to the deer. And you can see it really makes the pieces just stand out and gives them a special look. Now, the small bow in the Christmas garland set is a perfect little bow for the deer. And oh my gosh, I love how Grace did this. I love how she just combines stamps and dies and everything together. And these two die cuts together. Look how cute that is. And then he's going to be holding the Christmas light. So the traditional way to do the Christmas lights is to tangle it in the antlers. But he's going to be holding them this time. But first, we need to work on more elements of the cards. And we have a three and a half inch and two and a half inch circle. We've cut that from black cardstock. And then we've also cut some scalloped circle frames as well. We're gonna add some liquid glue to the back and then we're gonna layer those black pieces on there so that we're gonna have this really nice bold black cardstock with the white little scallop stitch detail all of the way around. Next, we're gonna cut the largest of the stitched rectangle frames. It's gonna be the size of a standard size card. And these little scallop circles are gonna be in the upper left and bottom right hand corners, just kind of like that. And so I'm putting this little circle in my Misty because we're gonna do some heat embossing. And I'm kind of eyeballing where the sentiment is gonna go when that circle's in the corner. So I'm just using these all kind of as placeholders. I'm gonna leave that stamp there, move the frame out of the way, and then pick up the stamp with the Misty. And then I'm gonna do some heat 
heat embossing here. So we're going to prep it with an anti-static powder tool, and I'm going to do Megan's method. I'm going to ink it up, and I'm going to stamp it down, but then also give some little taps to get a nice detailed image with that clear embossing powder. Excuse me, that clear embossing ink. Now we're adding the clear embossing powder, and so we're going to sprinkle that on, and you'll see that it's going to get the beautiful detail of that stamp, and that comes from the Magic Holiday Messages stamp set. And then we're going to heat it up with the heat tool, and we're going to have a nice bright white sentiment to go along with the white frame and the white scallop circle frames. And you can see how pretty that's going to start looking. Now the next section we're going to do is some snowflake stamping onto this area here. And so this one I'm going to stamp snowflakes all around the deer. And we're going to use snowflakes that are in both the giant holiday messages and the magic holiday messages. So I just kind of shopped my stash to look for some cute different size snowflakes and we're going to stamp those all around this area. And then we can once again sprinkle on the heat embossing powder and heat it up with the heat tool to have that nice bright detail. Next, we're going to start working on the card base. So here I have a standard size card base, five and a half by four and a quarter, and we've die cut the peppermint stripes backdrop there, which we just love. We've die cut that out of some white cardstock. And in this case, we're going to fill in the back of those stripes using some of the Let It Shine Snowflakes paper. And there's this really pretty red with the snowfall in it. And so we're going to put that onto the card base, and then we can layer the frame over top, and you'll see how that beautiful pattern paper is going to fill in the stripes of the peppermint stripe backdrop, but also have those little white details that's going to go along with the white gel pen details we've added to all of our die cuts. So I love how it kind of ties everything in together. And using pattern paper is such a fun and quick and easy way to fill in the peppermint stripes backdrop. Now we're going to take the frame and we're going to add some tape runner all behind it and we're going to attach those two scallop circles into those corners like we had kind of played around with earlier. And the nice thing about the stitched rectangle frame is it's the same size as the frame that's already built into the peppermint stripes backdrop so they're going to line up perfectly. And there we've added in our little deer and that's going to help us kind of eyeball where this other one needs to go. And now we can take our scissors and just cut off any of the excess and this can be nice and messy because that frame is going to cover up any of that kind of messy cutting that we're going to be doing. Next we can add some tape runner to the back of those circles and then we're going to layer this whole piece on to the peppermint stripes backdrop and there's something so stunning to me about those red and white stripes within the black circle and white detail. It's just really bold and so pretty for the holidays. I love that chalkboard look so much. Now it's time to start playing with all that greenery that we have. So we have some tape runner on the back of our deer here, and I'm just going to start sticking some of that greenery on there and then just trimming off any of the excess. And we're going to give him kind of like this cute little greenery base that he's almost like sitting in or hanging off of for the card. And so you'll see just how cute that is. And you can just kind of layer the bigger pieces and the tiny pieces. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Then we'll add him onto his circle, and then we're going to take that string of lights, we'll add some liquid glue onto the back, and we're going to put that kind of like in his paws there, as if he's holding the string of lights, which I think just, uh, it just looks so cute. And the little silver on those lights, I just feel like it makes the whole card, it gives a little sparkle and shine to it. Now for the next part, we're going to take that larger bow that we created and we're going to do a similar idea. We're going to layer the greenery behind it and then just cut off any of the excess and that's going to make it look almost like we tied a bow around the greenery and that's kind of what's holding it all together. And this is going to be in kind of an arced shape so it's going to look like a kind of like this little swag kind of piece arced over the circle that says deck the halls. I went ahead and added in some of those extra little greenery pieces, just kind of tucking them in just to give it a little bit more of a full look. And then we can add some liquid glue to the back and we can attach that right onto the other circle. And you can see how it just looks like, well, it looks like we've decked the halls, which is perfect with the sentiment. Now here we're going to take out some of these little kind of like silvery confetti pieces. They're really fun for shakers, but they're really cute just kind of layered on cards, kind of like sequins, but they're actually kind of like a flat look with a silver kind of sheen to it. So we're going to layer those on, and then I'm going to take a white gel pen and fill in dots. You can see when I, I stamped those snowflakes, somehow they just didn't end up lining up totally perfectly. That's okay. We'll just take the white gel pen out. So I've just added a bunch of little dots all the way around, and I feel like those white gel pen dots are echoing the dots that are on that red pattern paper in the background of the peppermint stripes backdrop. And now this card is all done, and oh my gosh, isn't it so pretty? Grace, you are absolutely incredible. 
Next up, we're going to work with a big, bold sentiment, and that is these giant holiday messages. And this one is my absolute favorite. It says, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And we're going to stamp that out in some jet black ink onto some craft cardstock. And I'm going to double stamp it just so that it has a nice, bold look. So you'll see when you double stamp it and you layer the two layers of ink on each other, it just looks gorgeous on that craft. We're also going to stamp some of the snowflakes that are in that same stamp set with some Yeti ink, which is a white pigment ink onto the craft as well. And I'm gonna double stamp these two, once again, just to get a more bold image on a darker cardstock like the craft. I went ahead and stamped one more snowflake and now we're gonna use the coordinating die for the giant holiday messages, which is this really pretty dotted scalloped oval. And then we're gonna die cut this and we're gonna use some colored pencils to color in the letters and leaves on this beautiful sentiment. Um, and the colored pencil are gonna look really nice kind of sitting on top of this craft card stock. And we're recreating a beautiful card by Audrey and wait till you see what she did with the peppermint stripes backdrop. She gave it a totally different look and it's so cute and fun. And I love how she used colored pencils too. Audrey uses them really well, Shari uses them really well, and I'm not very used to colored pencils. So it was really fun for me to kind of practice and try. And so I was going back and forth between different shades of red and different shades of green. And it certainly isn't perfect, but that's okay. I'm practicing and I'm learning and it turned out really, really pretty. And so we're gonna add some detail here with the red, and then we're gonna take a white pencil and add some details there. And I'd never really done this before and look how pretty that looks. I think I overdid it a little bit in my enthusiasm for how cool it looks. I think next time I use the white pencil, I'll use it a little more sparingly around the letters instead of putting it around like every single part of every letter. But it turned out really, really cool and it's just a really fun look where it makes everything look kind of frosty and really special. So I definitely recommend trying this if you've never done it before because it was really fun. Um, and just any white colored pencil will do. And then here I'm gonna take a white gel pen and fill in those little dots with just some more of the white just to kind of help tie in that whole look together. Now we're definitely going for a vintage Christmas look here. So we're gonna take out some antique linen distress ink and then just ink the sides of the scalloped oval and it's just gonna give it more of a little gradient kind of look into the craft and also a vintage aged kind of look too which I think is really pretty. Now next up is the trick with the peppermint stripes backdrop. So we're gonna die cut this out of black cardstock and we're gonna die cut it twice. Then we're gonna take one of those and we're just gonna flip it over. So one of them is gonna be flipped over just like that and then we're gonna layer them together and it's gonna give almost like this plaid look which is so cool. So I'll repeat that here so you can see. We're just gonna take one and flip it over right on top and that's what's gonna give it that really cool plaid look. So all of a sudden we take this dye that kinda of has this peppermint stripe feel to it and given it a brand new look. And this is just genius, Audrey. I absolutely love how you did this and it was just so much fun to do. So right there we have it flipped over, added some liquid glue, and now we can layer the two on top of each other. Then we're gonna take this whole thing and we're gonna layer that onto a craft card base that's gonna be five and a half by four and a quarter. And this is gonna give it almost like this vintagey buffalo plaid kind of look, um, which is really fun and really kind of trendy. Although I guess buffalo plaid has really been around for a long time, but I still think it's a cute and trendy look. But um, I just think it gives this really fun, warm, flannel-y kind of feel that's just gorgeous, especially with the kind of vintage spin that we put on these letters. Now we're gonna take those little snowflakes we stamped in the Yeti ink and I die cut those with the dies in the set and then we're just gonna layer them onto the sentiment just to give a little extra detail. And then I'm gonna add a white gel pen circle to the center of the snowflakes to kind of bring it into all the other white pencil and white gel pen details that we added onto the sentiment. And now this card is all done. It was quick and easy to do and the layering of that backdrop was so fun and so awesome. Next up, Shari is going to blow you away with the coolest card. She has taken the peppermint stripe backdrop. She's made it totally rainbow, totally birthday. And this is a flippy flappy card with a pinata too. It's so much fun. It's so cute. And I can't wait for you guys to see it. So take it away, Shari. I'm gonna be using the peppermint stripe backdrop in a different way today. I'm not making a peppermint stripe. I am going to be making a birthday card. So I'm going to start out with a piece of Bristol cardstock that's cut to the same size as that background. And I'm gonna do some rainbow ink blending across this to create some rainbow stripes. So I'm looking here at how my stripes go from corner to corner. 
and I'm just going to turn my paper and I'm going to start with my pink color first. So I wanted to make these stripes of color go in the same direction as the stripes on the background dye. So you're going to kind of get this cool look of pink stripes, then orange, then yellow. I started out with the Kitsch Flamingo Distress Ink for that corner there. And then I'm using some dried marigold for the orange. And then I will go back to that Kitsch Flamingo and start to blend the two out so that I get a nice seamless blend between the two. So you can see there how that is going in the correct direction of my stripes. Next, I'm using some Squeeze Lemonade to add in the yellow. And of course, I'm gonna go back and forth between those colors till I get them nice and blended. And then next I'm doing my green. This is Twisted Citron. And this is going to go corner to corner basically. Now I'm not worrying too much if these may overlap within a stripe. I think you're still gonna get that cool look of rainbow stripes. The next color I've got here is Salvage Patina for my blues or my teals, I guess. And I'm gonna go back to my green and blend out that line between the two. And then finally, I'm going to use Wilted Violet for that last little corner for my purple. I'm just really working these two. It's a much longer line <laughs> than the other ones. And then here is that Wilted Violet. So I'll just pull that in from the corner and then I'll go back to that salvage patina and blend out between the two colors. You can see how that really just softens up the line between the two. And you can see now we get these cool rainbow stripes when we layer that stripe background over top. But before I glue that down, I wanted to add some shimmer to my background. So I'm going to add some splatters. We're still gonna see that through the stripes. And I'm going to do that using two different methods. So first I have some Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust. I just put a few drops in my little dish here. And then I added some clean water. And then I'm gonna pick that up with my paintbrush and just add some sparkle splatters to the background. So this is going to dry clear just with some shimmery glitter where these droplets fall. Now I always like to kind of add two because you get a little more variation in texture. And so for this layer, I'm doing the white metallic watercolor. So when these dry, that sparkly stardust is going to be a lot more subtle and then these white droplets will show up a bit more. It's almost going to give the look of confetti in the background without having confetti or a shaker card. So you can see all that shimmer that you get. And now that it's dry, I can layer my stripes over top. And you're going to have that fun, shimmery confetti kind of peeking through. So I'll just put liquid glue all the way around this die cut and I'm also putting it on all the stripes so I make sure that this is very well stuck down. And as I said before, this piece is exactly the same size so I can line it up right on top of there. And then I also cut the stitched frame out of some pixie dust cardstock so I'm gonna have a shimmery frame around this. And this is gonna be the background panel for my card. I'm also going to be making a flippy flappy card with this. But for my sentiment, I'm using the giant happy birthday to you. I've just cut this from some narwhal cardstock. I like that gray on these kind of pastel rainbow colors. And again, I've just put some liquid glue all over the back of that. I'm gonna pick it up with my tweezers and place that centered on this stripe background that I created. So once I've got that nice and stuck down, I can decorate this a little bit. So I've got some images here. I've got the pinata from year seven. That's what's gonna flip out on the flippy flappy. And then I've stolen some party hats and a little party bird from the party animal set. And I'm gonna use it on some of the mice from the new autumn note. 
So I've already colored and cut those out with the coordinating dies. I'm going to add my little party hats to my mice. So I've got this little yay guy on this side, and then I'm going to add this little rainbow striped hat to the one that's sitting down. He is going to be sitting with that little cake. And then I'm just going to use these to decorate around my sentiment. So I've added that little bird sitting on top of the bee, which I just think is super cute. And then for the mice, I'm adding some thin foam squares. So these are half the thickness of normal foam squares. And I'm doing this because this panel is going to be popped up so it can be a flippy flappy card. So I don't want these to be popped up too terribly much. So I decided to go with the thin foam. So I'm gonna add this little guy on the left side and then I'll add a little foam square to his cake that he's getting ready to eat. So for the flippy flappy mechanism, this one's gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be a little bit larger. I want it to be this whole panel and normally we've done this on a smaller panel. So of course I've cut a much larger card base. So this card base is not a normal size card base. This card base is six inches wide by four and three quarters tall. Now I have a piece of just regular cardstock cut to that same five and a half inches wide by four and a quarter tall. And I'm using my flippy flappy die to create this accordion piece right in the center. So I did the same method, put it right on the edge, centered it up where I wanted that little guy to flip out. And now I'm just folding it in both directions to create a little accordion and make sure that these joints move very well. This is the back side, so I'm gonna just put a little B on it so it's a little more obvious on camera. And then here is my tab that we're gonna pull. This is cut from some mermaid cardstock and I'm putting a B on the back side of it as well. Now I can just thread that first little fold through the slot on the tab. And then I can add some adhesive and fold it over and glue it down to the tab. And I've used some tape in the past, but this time I just grabbed my glue tube and added a little line of glue. And I know this is going to be really sturdy and not let go. As long as you don't put too much glue on there and it doesn't squeeze out, it will be perfectly fine. So I'm making sure that it is moving properly. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my front panel to this before I put any foam on it so that it's still nice and flat. So I'm just putting adhesive on all four sides. I've put some through the center. I'm just making sure to avoid that piece that needs to move. And this one is going to come out the top of my panel. So that tab is going to be at the top. And now I'm going to flip it over and put my foam tape on each side. So this is double foam tape. I've just folded it over on itself. And I'm going to put a strip on each side of this panel. And now I can put this onto my card base. So again, this is a little bit larger than a standard size card because that stripe panel is a standard A2 size card. And then once I've got that on there, I can start to put my cute little pinata on there. So I'm gonna use some double-sided tape on that white piece. And then I'm going to use a piece of acetate. Now this is cut with the long rectangle that's part of the die. That's the one you use to cut the little arm that's gonna come out. I'm just gonna center that up. And then to make sure everything's nice and stuck down, I'm putting another piece of tape across it so that I have some adhesive on top of the acetate. And then I can take this smaller rectangle that comes with that die set, which is just a decorative piece to kind of hide all the adhesive. It's cut from the same mermaid cardstock. I'm just gonna put a piece of that tape on the back of my pinata. And this is how I'm going to adhere it down to that acetate strip that pops out. So I put it up onto his head so I've got a lot of acetate that I can stick to because that was a pretty long piece of tape. And then he is going to pop out when you pull that tab. I'm gonna go ahead and add that little decorative piece. I cut this from Peacock so it was a slightly different color. 
but that's going to tell someone to pull it and I actually end up adding some stamping to that tab here at the end. I just thought it was a little <laughs> blank. Of course, I'm always adding some stickles to things, so just some little accents to the party hats with some glitter to make it match all the other glitter that we added to this background. And then here's where I decided I wanted to stamp, hope your birthday is a smash. This sentiment is also from year seven, but I just thought that this tab was a little plain when it got pulled up, so this just adds some more interest. And then here is the finished card. When you pull that tab, that pinata is going to pop out and they are ready to party. I really love this rainbow stripe background that I created. It is a fun way to use a peppermint stripe background in a different way. This card is so much fun, Shari, and it would make anybody's birthday. I love when that pinata pops out. It's so cute and so clever, and I can't wait to make a card just like this one. And next up, we have some beautiful cards to share from you from the design team. And first up, we have a card by Lynette, and look how beautiful this is. She alternated craft white and red and the peppermint stripes, and it just gives this warm holiday feel. Here, Lynette combined our Peppermint Stripes backdrop with our How You Be Mint add-on, which is such a cute and fun look. Next up, we have an adorable card set by Elise, and here you can see that she's given this now a beautiful and different vibe using pattern paper and colored cardstock and a giant thank you die. Such a cute card, easy to reproduce, and just such a beautiful and fun look. And I love that this Peppermint Stripes backdrop can go from the holidays to year-round just by changing up the colors. Next up, we have a super cute idea by Elena, and she used our Penguin Party stamp set and layered red and turquoise and white together for such a gorgeous pattern. I just love it. And then this card by Tammy is so fun. She did traditional peppermint stripes and combined it with Penguin Party and How You Bean mint add-on. Here, this card by Yanea is so pretty. I love her inked background with the snowflake in the background behind the peppermint stripes backdrop. Totally genius. This is the card by Audrey that inspired me to make mine today. I absolutely just love that plaid look in the background by layering the stencils. Next up, we have a gorgeous card by Leticia, and she created a cute little shaker in that circle, which is so much fun and so adorable. This is the card by Grace that inspired me to make mine today. It's just stunning. I just love it. It's so much fun. And this layout is really cool. And I can't wait to use it on other types of cards. This card by Melissa is so fun. And I love that she used a bright green on her card and then inked her sentiment with green as well. So cute and fun. And then here, Elena took the Peppermint Stripes backdrop into fall by layering it with orange. So I love the versatility of this die. And this card by Audrey. It's absolutely beautiful. She has some traditional red and white stripes and that wreath she created, she did that by layering the magic iris snowflake dye over and over again. Isn't that gorgeous? I can't wait to try it. We can't wait to see what you guys do with this awesome new backdrop dye. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and we hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.